Hey, what's going on guys? How are we doing? So today we're going to talk about base stealing. Um, we've talked a lot in the past about stealing second base and how we, we try to make it more of a science than um, just kind of guessing where we'll understand pitcher's time to the plate, basically how long it take him from the time his foot lifts until the ball hits the catcher's mitt. And then we take the catcher's pop time, the time that the ball hits his mitt until it hits the uh, shortstop or second baseman's mitt. And then we're going to add those two together and we're going to know our time because we do it in practice. We get on a stopwatch and basically get our lead and see how long it takes us to steal, basically to get from first to second base from our from our uh, normal lead. Then we can add those numbers up and we've got a pretty good idea before we even run if we can make it or not. Well, when you get to second base um, and you're trying to steal third base, it's a little bit more of an inexact science because um, typically we're not going to have a pop time to third base very often. Um, and the pitcher is able to do an inside move. So it, it changes a few things up. But what we do want to do, there's, there's definitely some keys that we want to know. And in my opinion, stealing third base is easier than stealing second base um, uh, because pitchers don't always do a great job of holding, especially at younger levels. And there's certain things you can look for that will really... Um, will really help you get a good jump. So here's some of the things you, you need to know. Um, first, when you're stealing a third, in my opinion, you can't, you can't force to steal a third, right? Um, but you're always looking for it. So you're looking at these things, and, and if, you're, if you're a guy that can run a little bit, you're always looking for the jump. And if you get the jump, boom, then you can go. But don't force it. If it's, Sometimes it's not going to be there, and if it's not there, you just don't take it. Um, but you're always looking for, you're always trying to find out these few things that we're going to go over real quick. And I'll play this as I kind of talk. Um, so the first thing is understanding pitcher's tendencies with regards to looks to second base. So when you're, when you're on the bench, when you're, you know, when you've got someone else in your team at second, you should be studying the pitcher. How many times is he, you know, is he a one look guy where he's just going to look once, turn and throw? Is he a two look guy? Is he a no look guy? Once you get an idea of how many looks, it really helps you as far as being able to anticipate getting a jump. Um, you know, the three other things that are very, very important. First one is when he pitches, does he look at second and throw home or does he look at home? So you can see with Syndergaard, he looks home and pitches. So once you know that, you have an idea of how to get the jump. Um, you can anticipate him turning his head. If you know the number of looks, he turns his head. Now I can start to get off, boom, and I can go. Um, the second thing is, what's his max number of looks? So, um, very rarely are guys going to look more than two times. And some some pitchers, especially at younger levels, are going to look no more than one time. So, if you know the max number of looks, let's say he's a two-look max. He's never done three looks before. Well, after his second look, once he turns away, you can basically start to get off and go. Because you know he's never done three looks before. And same thing if he's a one-look guy all the time, he's never done two looks. Then once he looks away once... You start to get off, boom, and you go. The third thing is, what's his tempo? So a lot of people with tempo use UCLA. Basically, um, you know, how long does it take him to release the ball? So you start counting in your head, U, C, L, A. And you see, does he pitch all the time on C? Does he pitch all the time on L? And let's say he's an L guy, you can start to anticipate so you start counting in your head, and once he gets to L, or right before you get to L, you start to get off, and boom, you can go. Right? So it's all about anticipating, and you can watch Galvin here. Bang, he's off. So stealing third, the important thing is you have to have some momentum. It's not like first, stealing second base where you're just going to be standing flat-footed, and then you're going to take off and go. You need some momentum. You need active feet. Um, and so you're always looking to get a little bit on the pitcher. Remember, we're stealing third base off of the pitcher, not so much off of the catcher, especially as we get a little bit higher. So let's watch how it's done here. So Galvin's on, on second base. Syndergaard comes set. He gives him one look. Now Galvin, through videotape study, through scouting reports, through just watching the game, probably has a good idea. First, he knows it's in the guard pitches when he looks away, not when he looks at second. I don't know if he knows what his number, max number of looks is, but in here it doesn't really seem to matter. It's one look. I'm sure he gives more than one look sometimes. Um, he may understand his tempo, so you see L pitches on L. Maybe he knows that, so he's going to break on that. 
Um, but the biggest thing, and this is this is what you need to learn how to do, and this takes practice, is if you watch him, Syndergaard looks at him, and here he's kind of creeping into the line. You don't have to creep into the line. Um, but once he looks away, you can see he's going to have active feet. He's going to start to get off. He's going to shuffle. He's going to do another little shuffle. And so by the time the foot is lifted and he's gone right there, you can see the distance he's covered by cheating a little bit. So he's here. If we just back him up a little bit, he's gained an extra three, four, five feet by using some momentum at active feet, getting off, and he takes off. And he's safe. Now you can see if he was, if he had dead feet and stole from right here, he would have never made it. Right? Because he's in there by, you know, he's just in there. So really, really important to use momentum and, and make sure that you're using uh, active feet. Hopefully this, this helps you guys out. Um, you know, I think it's an under practice part of the game, especially at lower levels. Um, I think players just rely on their speed still, or they just rely on a, on a catcher that has a really weak arm. But as you get a little bit older, um, you get to high school, you can really exploit pitchers um, who do a little bit better job of holding guys on, but uh, you know they, they're not close to, to um, perfect with it. And so if you do a little bit of studying and you pay attention and you, and you think about pitchers' tendencies and looks and um, you know, where they're looking when they pitch and tempos and max looks and all that stuff um, that I really didn't hear about until I was much older. You're going to be able to uh, start anticipating and you're going to be able to start stealing basically strictly off the pitcher, even if you're not a super fast guy. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions um, or have anything else that you use. Um, leave the comments in the section below. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, send the videos to all your friends. All that good stuff. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram where we're posting videos uh, every day, just like this, only in condensed form. So uh, good luck, and we'll talk to you later.